So welcome to the wonderful world of the growing dome. And I'd like to discuss heating your growing dome. A lot of people have questions. Do I need to heat my dome? Will it grow all winter without a heater? And so if I'm going to get a heater, what kind, how big of a healer would I need? So I want to answer some of those questions to the best of my ability. So essentially what we've done at Growing Spaces is we've created a net zero energy greenhouse. And we suspect it's uh, one of the very few that are like that that are available today. And so what this means essentially, if you're trying to cut down use of fossil fuel energy, this is the greenhouse for you. And even if you do decide to put some heat into your greenhouse, what happens is that because of the energy efficient shape and the energy efficient features, the growing dome uses a third of the amount of heat that a regular greenhouse would use. And so essentially, the growing dome is designed to grow all winter long without a heater in the average climate throughout the United States. And of course, there's a lot of variety of climates, but we're here in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado at Pagosa Springs, 7,500 feet. We get temperatures below zero. You get a decent amount of sun and our growing domes will grow all winter long without a heater. However, some people choose to put in a heater and so we want to talk about the different types of heater, show you some in this video and talk about some of the ins and outs of heating or not heating your dome. So this is our 15 foot growing dome. We're choosing not to heat this dome this winter just to show you what happens. And so basically last night we had a frost of about almost 30 degrees of frost. Now if this was a triple wall growing dome, it may not even freeze, but this is a twin wall. And we know that the twin wall only keeps about 20 degrees warmer than the outside temperature. So we're assuming that last night we had about 10 degrees of frost in here. And of course, in order to have a dome with no heater, you have frost hardy plants. So we've got a lot of frost hardy plants in here. We've got kale, we've got turnip, we've got Swiss chard, we've got all sorts of herbs, we've got rosemary and marjoram, thyme, parsley. And so essentially what happens is when it freezes, this is exactly what happens. In the morning you go in there, the plants are all wilted and you think, oh my dear, what's going to happen now? And the best thing you can do is to Firstly, not worry. These are frost hardy plants. They'll stand quite a bit of frost. And of course, they're always in the most shock, the first major frost of the year. And after that, they start to harden up and get more resilient and able to handle the frost. So for the first frost or two, what you might want to do is go into the dome with a little spray bottle with water because the main damage that frost does is actually freeze dries the leaves of the plant. So if you can moisten those leaves, when you go in there first thing in the morning with a little spray bottle, spray the leaves, it will help them to recover very, very quickly. So this is the type of heater we recommend for the third level of heating. If you don't want your dome to freeze at all, you know, you've got some very sensitive crops, and so this is called a southern burner. And the beauty of this heater, it's got a thermostat. And you can set the thermostat for the minimum temperature you want the dome to be at. This is a 25,000 BTU heater. It's got lots of power, so it'll heat a 33-foot dome quite adequately. For a 42-foot dome, depending on the temperature you want to maintain in there, you might need two of these. And we have them fixed up to a propane bottle inside the dome itself, but you can also have a propane tank outside. And the reason we're having this heater on in this dome is we've got an avocado tree that's quite frost sensitive. We've got these water hyacinths, which are also frost sensitive, and water lettuce. So we're trying to be nice to this dome and we set the temperature for about 45 uh, for a, a cold winter's night. If it's sub-zero outside, it'll still keep at 45 using a minimal amount of propane. 
Okay, I use propane or natural gas if it's available because that is the cheapest form of heating. You get more bang for your buck with that type of heating as opposed to electricity. But some people have even put a wood burning stove, a pellet stove in their dome, and that works really well too. The only thing about heating a dome is you get a lot more condensation inside the dome and you get a lot of drips, especially in the early morning when you've still got a, a very cold temperature outside and the heater hasn't quite kicked off yet. So you might come in your dome and find a lot of drips from the ceiling. Uh, it's not really a big deal, condensation. I've never had a problem with it. And even the tubes themselves have condensate inside the tubes. It appears, it disappears. Polycarbon is actually permeable to moisture on a microscopic level. So don't worry if there's condensation inside the polycarbon itself. It'll come, it'll go. So basically, what we have here is a level two heater. It's a propane heater on top of a gas bottle that you turn on and off. And we point it at the water tank so it heats up the water. But all day long, the, the water tank is receiving the heat from the sun. It's shining on the dark painted surface of the tank, absorbing heat all day, releasing that into the dome. And the amount of heat that is released by the water tank is a equivalent to running a ceramic heater for six hours, a 1500 watt ceramic heater for six hours. Now the dome is so well insulated that this growing dome can be 30 degrees warmer than an outside temperature. But we like to keep things moving along, so that's why we're heating it. So what we've noticed over the years is that the dome actually has microclimates. So in the winter, the water tank is about 50 degrees, so that's warm. So we put uh, more heat sensitive plants closer to the tank in the winter. So you can see those are doing really well. And we have our frost hardy and cool weather crops, just like the Swiss chard. We have those near the polycarbonate glazing because that's the coldest area of the dome, right next to the glazing. You can actually see where it's touching the glazing that froze last night, but everything else is doing really well. And so we've put a little extra heat in this dome to make these tomatoes grow a little longer. It's now the 1st of December and they're still producing, but generally we pull our tomatoes out late December because they don't really set fruit as well. They're very slow. Uh, growing, the, they're not as sweet, they're kind of hard, and so generally we just pull them out and have all our uh, cool weather crops in the outer bed. But this is doing pretty well, and let me see how sweet they are. Pretty sweet, very good indeed. So this is what the dome looks like at noon. So you see the kale has made a great recovery. The turnips are doing fine. This hasn't missed a beat at all in spite of being frozen. However, we knew that the frost sensitive plants would not survive. And this is the last of the nasturtiums, those are frost sensitive. We're gonna pull those out. And of course the pepper, they're a heat loving crop. They're not gonna survive. So we're gonna be pulling those out as well. But all this green is doing really well and the peas are still doing fine. You can get peas all winter long. They're a wonderful winter crop. And in February you get, these will be up here and be getting a great crop of peas. Um, over here we've got these cabbage that made a great recovery. And so same with the Swiss chard doing well. So essentially this is the kind of dome where we're choosing not to heat it. It's even a standard polycarbonate dome. Now, we know that with the premium polycarbonate, we can be 30 degrees warmer in here with no heater at all. But the twin wall has only got a less amount of insulation, so we might be 20 degrees warmer out inside. We might be 20 degrees warmer inside than we are outside. So, the dome itself, 
given an average climate, we get sub-zero temperatures in Pagosa Springs, we get a decent amount of sun. If your dome is in a, in a location where it gets at least six hours of sun a day, six hours of sun a day, you can grow all year long frost hardy plants without a heater. And there's a huge amount of frost hardy plants that you can grow, and I made a list of them which you can find on the blog. So essentially we're choosing not to heat this dome. The, the first frost of the year is when the plants look the most wilted. And once they start to get hardened off, it doesn't phase them at all, you know. So don't worry if that first frost, everything looks kind of sad and wilty. If it's frost hardy, it will recover. It will start to harden off and it will do real well all winter long. So that's what we're demonstrating here. No heater. A lot of people choose not to heat the dome and they can grow all through the winter. A huge amount of greens, root vegetables, herbs, and it's designed to be self-sustaining with no heater whatsoever. The heater is the water tank and the undersoil heating system and that creates a wonderful space for year-round growing. So we hope you enjoyed our video. We showed you some different domes, some different heaters. Go to our blog. There's a wonderful post that shows all the wonderful plants you can grow all winter long that are frost hardy or just keep growing throughout the winter. And if you are considering having a heater, there's a spreadsheet that will calculate how much heat your growing dome will need to heat it to whatever temperature. So go to our blog and enjoy what we've posted there and have a happy winter. All right. Was that all I was going to talk about? Mm. I'll take one of those, throw it at me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Aren't they good? Man, they're so good.